we uh, placed an order for some sucker stuff. Uh, that's in the in the yellow case there. We use a gallon to the acre of that product. We also use Drexelin. We've been running Drexelin through backpacks on the broadleaf. Got the backpack out. That's what we uh, sprayed all that. And yeah, we never got any footage of this. So you turn this little red knob. Yeah. There's a little scale right here, and it's calibrated in milliliters. Oh. Uh, you got a backpack around? Uh, it's over at the field. Okay. Uh, we've also got a special applicator on the backpack. Uh, that's new for this. And why year. is that special? It so, uh, dispenses a, a set quantity of that fluid per plant. And uh, so our guys have been taking the flower out and then applying. To that individual plant a specific quantity now what's what's the now the specific quantity on those are they adjustable yeah yeah there's a little measuring cup that comes with it and there's a little dial on it and you can you can increase or decrease the amount and we talked to several other growers and we we settled on 22 milliliters uh the lowest that i heard of was was 16 and the highest that i heard of was 24. and also you've got an issue of how much of this uh drexelin do you put with the water and we settled on five ounces per gallon because the lowest that I heard was four and the highest that I heard was six. And the guy who said six was too much, I thought we would back that off a little now, bit. So we've been putting five ounces to the gallon and 22 milliliters per plant, and that seems to be working pretty pretty good. Now, you, the way that you apply this is you, is you run through and, and, you, and you top. We break and, the flower out. Okay, you break the flower out. And any suckers that are longer than one inch. Okay. Now, how, how does this exactly, you, you spray this on and, and is it, is it, it, is it absorbed through osmosis? It runs down through the, it runs down the stalk and where those little sucker buds are, that's very tender material. So yes, it will be absorbed by the plant at that location. And that's a little different than what we're doing with the burley. We're using the sucker stuff and we're spraying it on the leaves and the plant's absorbing it through the leaves but that same chemical on the broadleaf, we've been told will damage the leaf, which would sort of defeat the purpose. Yeah, you don't, you so, don't want that leaf stained up. So we're not gonna up. be spraying like a 12 row boom over top of the broadleaf with sucker stuff. Now we have been spraying a 12 row boom over top of it for insects or for fungus with different insecticides and different fungicides. We've actually made five <clears> applications <throat> on that. Can you explain the reasons why, why, what the difference is between the kinetic broadleaf uh, handling and uh, qu quality control as far as the differences between the burley and the... When you buy a pack of cigarettes, you don't see what that leaf looks like. The only person who sees what that leaf looks like is the guys here in the stripping room and the guy who buys it up there at the receiving station. From that point, it goes to a factory and it gets shredded. The kinetic broadleaf, on the other hand, you will see every leaf of that because it's going to be turned into the wrapper for cigars. So that leaf needs to be perfect. We don't want to have a hole in it from an insect. We don't want to have a, a discoloration from chemicals. Uh, everything that we do is in an effort to make sure that that leaf is perfect. And if that leaf is perfect, it's worth more money for us and it's worth more for the end user who's gonna make wrapper out of it. If that leaf is damaged in some way, that leaf will end up on the inside of the cigar and that is less valuable because there's plenty of stuff to put inside the cigar it's that exterior, that veneer, that that uh, billboard on the outside that we're working on. So being this is the first uh, year, you got about, what, almost five acres of Connecticut broadleaf. Yeah, there's a buddy of mine and I that are partners in that, um, and we've been working together. For example, the other day I had to be at work, and it was time to put on another application of insecticide, and so he handled it. And then he had to go, like, to a dentist and get a root canal done yesterday so yesterday evening i did the application of the fungicide we're kind of like a tag team like so i'll get it or he'll get it and a couple of times when we started backpacking drexelin on we were both there because it's new to all of us so i had a backpack he had a backpack jose had a backpack pedro had a backpack and he brought his guys over and they were breaking the flowers out and getting the suckers out and we were coming along behind them with the backpack and applying the chemical so we may apply the chemical to five plants in a row and then skip one that they didn't top because it wasn't flowered yet. Yeah. So we're going to have to go over that field again and get the, as the late bloomers 
flower out. We'll have to get those out of there and, and treat it. So we're gonna have to make at least two passes over it to get it clean topped. So how did how did so far how do you uh, how do you think uh, the broadleaf's doing? It looks great. Um, we put a considerable amount more material and labor into that crop, so we really won't know until we sell that crop if our efforts paid off. But I decided from the get go that if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it by the book. We're gonna do it right so that we can actually see if this is gonna be something that we can pursue in the future. Now, if we do all this extra work and have all this extra expense and we don't see the return in the end, we probably won't do it again. But if we do this to the letter and this turns out to generate, I mean, all of you are familiar with terms like gross sales, expenses, and net return. And that's really all that it's a business. So Connecticut Broadleafs is really not known for this area. We usually do Burley down here. It's Burley Belt here. Um, so uh, what? Is exclusive to this area. What, um, what challenges do you face that's different from regional areas that that typically grow the Connecticut Broadleaf? I would broadleaf? expect that our climate to be a little bit warmer in Kentucky than it is in Connecticut or Pennsylvania. Uh, I would also expect us to maybe have a little bit hotter, drier fall than they have in the Northeast but that remains yet to be seen. Uh, so far it's panned out that way. I mean, we haven't had measurable rainfall in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the broadleaf seems to be handling that okay. Uh, the burley is starting to fire up at the bottom. I don't know if you noticed that or not. The bottom five or six leaves are yellow. Mm -hmm. That plant is diverting all of its energy toward the top now. So we're gonna break the top off and spray the sucker retardant so that plant can continue to grow us some leaves. Now this uh, third container here uh, probably gonna put some of that on down at the house you uh, saw the hornworm you saw the damage that it did here a problem I don't know if you can see that or not hornworms the problem with hornworms you can you can carry those to the barn you know, that hornworm was relatively small that you found on that plant. They'll get big as your little finger. Yeah. And, or big as your Three thumb. inches long? Yeah, at least. So he, he's got weeks to go, mm. and he's going to eat a lot to get there. And he took that he took that whole leaf for himself. Yeah. and Just that and one little tiny, he's not even. Just imagine when he hits his stride, he'll eat entire plants. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. So we'll put some diapel and... You know, this is something that's new to me, so I'll have to read it's up. It's like, it. uh, hello, hornworm. Meet my little friend. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll probably be putting some of that on later. Yeah. What I want to do right now is uh, take this pipe down and get the pump out and see if we can't start setting some irrigation up. Uh, we're going to try to trick it into raining. Just sitting around that campfire, more moonshine in a dump truck. Some southern boys with them southern toys, we shoot the moon to the sun's up. Got no time for no mud dust, just tall grass in a pickup truck. Cause southern boys, we kick up dust and shoot the moon to the sun's up. Tailgates dropping like paintings at the sundown. Tail lights circling in the middle.